Are you Clive Hill? I better come with you guys, all right? Yeah, it's all right, mate. I'm going with the ambulance, Steve. Right. Any sign? No. You sure he went up this way? Yeah, he won't have got far. He could hardly walk. What side of the road was he on? Up the other side by them cars, and he had a television. A television? He was drunk. Nine o'clock in the morning. Can you wake up, please, sir? What? Is this your car? Yeah. Is that your television? Yeah. And that's your blood on your knuckles, is it? What blood? Is this the man? That's him. Right. You step out of the vehicle, please. What? I'm arresting you for assault, OK? No. No. I'm being drunk in charge. <sighs> drunk in charge. I can't believe you've done me for that. That was his car that I found you in, wasn't it? That little tosspot has had me for nearly two grand. So you hit him? Now remember. You don't remember hitting him? Do you remember taking his keys? Ruddy minis. And his television? Look, why do you ask him about my money? He owed me. He rolled me over. But all we're interested in is the assault. If you ever complain about another matter, we can arrange for you to see someone else if you like. Will I get my money back? Two grand. Do you believe him, Steve? Yeah, I do. So where is this bloke who's supposed to have condi? Clive Hill. Hmm. He's at St Hughes. He's got a broken nose and a few bruises, but he'll be out today. Mm -hmm. uh, he lives with his girlfriend in the flat where we found him, but we can't contact her at the moment. And I thought you couldn't con a con man. Do you know him? Stephen Bickham. Hmm. He used to go around pensioners' houses and charge them 500 quid to fix their roof. Then he'd stick a ladder up, move a tile and be back home for breakfast. Nice. I've been done. Surely not. Now, who would be clever enough to do you? Clive Hill. Must have got my number out of the phone book. Phone me up and said, you're a bricklayer, aren't you? Want some more work? Well, of course I do. I was sitting around doing nothing at the time, wasn't I? Oh, what, you'd run out of pensioners, can't have you? Uh... So what'd you do after the phone call, then? <sighs> well, he came round and showed me this stuff, didn't he? Work Express, he called himself. He said, this area is going to be the first stage in a big nationwide thing. Guaranteed eight jobs a year, minimum. Sounds good. It sounded the business. Showed me all these advertisements. They're going to put on buses, trains, telly, everything. Even had a free phone number for the punters to phone. He said it was going to be more famous than 999. So what did you do? I bought four areas instead of one, didn't I? Well, that's how good he was. How much did you pay him? Nearly £2,000. My life savings, every penny I had left. That's terrible. And nothing happened? Nothing. Not even a single job, not a single advertisement. Nobody's even heard of Work Express. Didn't you even speak to Clive Hill about it? Well, of course I talked to him. The last few months I've done nothing else but talk to him. What did he say? Four times he promised me his ad campaign was going to start on cable. Four different dates he's given me. I thought it was going to be yesterday. But he actually told you that? Yeah. And when it didn't happen, I thought, right, you made me look like a right prat. <laughs> well, you can laugh. I'm going to lose my house over this. All right. And does he work alone? As a girl works in the office. But he's the one who does all the business. All right. We're going to take a look then, shall we? Two grand. What a mug, eh? Good security. Yeah. Who is it? Uh, Detective Sergeant Beach, Sun Hill. Oh, you better come up. Hello, I'm Barbara Hurst. Uh, Don Beach, and this is WDC Rorton. What can I do for you, Mr. Beach? I understand Clive Hill works here. He does, but I don't know where he is, I'm afraid. I've been calling his home all morning. I'm afraid that he was the victim of an assault earlier today. Oh, oh poor Clive. Is he going to be OK? Oh, yeah, he'll be fine. It's not actually the assault that we want to talk to you about. Can you tell us a bit about what you do here? <sighs> yeah, of course. Um, let me explain. 
Your tap's leaking. You've got to go to work. What do you do? Look in the phone book? Probably. Right. 30 plumbers. How do you know if they're any good? They could be cowboys. Could be too expensive, might not be there to take your call. Meanwhile, you're late for work and the flood on the kitchen floor is getting deeper and deeper. Have you ever been in that situation? <laughs> I have. And that's where the idea for Work Express came from. You make one phone call to us and we sort the problem out. So tradesmen pay to join? Yeah. And do you guarantee them a certain amount of jobs? No, we can't. Not until the launch. And that will be saturation advertising on cable television, press and radio, and a poster campaign for the buses. So when's this campaign due to start? Mm, we've had some problems. It's nothing we can't sort out, but it has meant a delay. And until that's done, there's not going to be any work for anyone? That's absolutely right. The point is, if it's not done in a proper, coordinated way, it's a waste of everybody's time and money. So if Clive Hill were to tell one of your customers that he had a date for that campaign, he'd be lying? Well, he knows not to do that. Does he? How long have you known Clive? Um, about a year. I advertised and he was one of the applicants. A bit young, I thought, but he was so enthusiastic. You know, he stood out. And he's worked for you ever since? Well, we're partners now. Oh, I got the impression that it was your company. Well, it's my concept. But if you want motivation and commitment from good salesmen, you've got to offer them something worthwhile. So Clive looks after the sales in return for a half share in the company? Was that his idea? Yes. He, he's quite pushy. A good salesman? Not bad. He's keen. Keen enough to lie in order to make a sale? That's what it looks like. I don't understand it. I'm sure he wouldn't. Well, nevertheless, we will need to take a statement from you. Does it have to be official? I'm afraid so. There's been a complaint. It's a serious allegation. Is it? Hmm. Just can't trust anyone these days, can you? Nice woman, I thought. Very intelligent. She's grinning at Excuse me. Are you the police? Yeah, you are. I'm Mr. Fox. I've got a message. I've only just got here. Are you Clive Hill's girlfriend? Yeah. Well, what's going on? Um. They said someone broke in. Can we come in? Yeah. Oh no. Where's Clive? Um, he took a bit of a battering. Is this in use? <laughs> i better go. It's all right. He's not in any danger. He's got a broken nose. A broken nose? Who did this? Uh, one of his customers at Work Express. Right. I knew this was going to happen. Why'd you say that? Well, it's not the first time. He's been threatened before. Who by? Other customers. He's a partner in the company, isn't he? Don't make me laugh. Well, that's what Barbara Hurst told us. I bet she did. Looks like butter wouldn't melt. But that cow's got Clive running after her like a dog on a lead. What do you mean? They're not business partners. She's lying. Why would she lie about that? She lies about everything. Clive answered an ad in the paper. It said earn up to £500 a week. Well, first thing she did when he started was to make him a partner. That way she doesn't have to pay him. And now this. I'm going to kill her. This is nothing to do with Clive. Sergeant Boyden's checked the records of both Clive Hill and Barbara Hurst. There's nothing on either. Doesn't surprise me. Might they change their names? Yeah, well, that's what I would have done if I'd have had a load of angry builders on my case. Clive Hill. Yeah, who are you? Detective Sergeant Beach. This is WDC Rawton, Sun Hill. How are you feeling? What do you think? Did you recognise your attacker? Yeah. His name's Stephen Bickham. Any idea why he might have attacked you? He's crazy, that's why. You've got a complaint, you talk about it, that's what I do. Not go breaking people's noses. I'll be looking for compensation, you can tell him that. He might be doing the same. Oh, yeah. If he's left my nose bent, he could ruin my career. I mean, nobody trusts a bloke with a dodgy nose, do they? Are there any other dissatisfied customers? Well, there was a bit of a hiccup with our marketing strategy, but it's all systems go now. 
Bickham said that he gave you almost two grand. Now, is that right? It could be. It was a long time ago. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Any idea when the campaign's going to start? Six weeks' time. It's going to be big. You won't be able to breathe without seeing our phone number somewhere. Who booked the date? That's Barbara's department. Barbara's my partner. And she told you it was booked? But hang on. What's all this got to do with my broken nose? Well, we've had a complaint that a deception's taken place. How many times has this campaign been put back? I don't know, a few. And each time it's been Barbara's decision? Who runs the company, Clive? We're partners. Me and Barbara. That's not what Esther told me. She said Barbara was your boss. Oh, well, she would say that, wouldn't she? Why? Because she doesn't understand what's going on. And what is going on? I'm trying to get somewhere. That's what's going on. If Esther wants to sit in a pokey flat for the rest of her life, that's up to her. There's no reason to hold me back. Clive, somebody is telling Porky's here. Now, is it Esther or is it Barbara? Barbara was quite prepared to land you in it. Oh, yeah, she was. Land me in what? Well, she told us that you knew the campaign hadn't been booked. Which means you must have been lying. He's covering for her. Unless Clive's in it as well. No, I think Esther's right. Barbara's got him in her clutches. <laughs> Lucky bloke. Hey, you don't think that they're, um... Well, it's a thought. Yeah, it is, isn't it? This is some scam she's pulling, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll go and have another word with Bickham. You stick around here and have a word with Esther before she goes in, OK? Right, Sergeant. Yeah. Girls talk. See if she can get him to open up. Girls talk. <sighs> Thanks, June. I've been up the office a few times, yeah. Nice woman. Did you ask her what was going on? Well, she won't know. She's only the secretary, isn't she? Barbara Hurst, the secretary. Yeah. Well, she told you that. Yeah. She's in tears, you know. Well, when was this? Yesterday, when I went round here. He's only stitched her up and all. What do you mean? Well, he's left on her own to face all the flack. And what sort of bloke is that, eh? I mean, I've done the world a favour. You should be giving me a medal. You don't get medals for being stupid, you know. What? You got the monkey, not the organ grinder. Barbara Hurst pulls all the strings. The secretary? Stephen, she is not the secretary. She's the boss. Where did you get Clive Hill's address from? She gave it to me. I don't believe this woman. She was in tears. I mean, she couldn't fake that, could she? Couldn't she? Can I see him now? In a minute. Look, Esther. I don't think Clive realises it, but he's in a lot of trouble. Why? Well, we think he's covering up for Barbara Hurst. Either that or he's part of the deception. No, not, not Clive. In that case, why is he protecting her? If we don't get some answers, we'll have no choice but to consider him a suspect. Isn't he saying anything? No, and he could end up going down for this. I don't want to be nosy, but is there anything else going on? What do you mean? You know. I don't want to talk about it. Please, it's important. We're engaged, you know. Sorry. Do you think she's good looking? Barbara? Some people might think so. All Clive does is talk about her. Anyone would get a little jealous, wouldn't they? Have you ever asked him up front? What? Asked him. Or oh, you're having an affair? <laughs> no, I can't do that. Well, it's not for me to say, Esther, but if you start living a lie as well, things are only going to get worse. You're going to have to face the truth sooner or later, and so is Clive. God, I don't know. Will you come with me? Yeah, if you want. Should you be at work? I've got a message. How are you? Just wish they let me out of here. Can I see? Uh, leave it. Sorry. I bought you some clothes and some grapes. Oh, great. Thanks. I'm starving. Please say they're investigating a fraud. Criminal deception. It's nothing. Just a mix-up. 
You're not protecting Barbara, then? Oh, here we go again. I'm not protecting Barbara, all right, because there's nothing to protect her from. Well, how come there's so many people giving you a hard time, then? This is what it's like all the time. Why do you keep going on about it? Because she's using you. You're infatuated with her. I'm not. Yes, you are. Every night when you get back, all I get is Barbara this and Barbara that. It's driving me mad. What I'm interested in is why you feel you owe anything. We're partners. Come on, Clive. You're not real partners. Why don't you just admit it? How much money do you make? Look, all my income has been reinvested in the business. Rubbish! She hasn't paid you a penny. We're not starving, are we? I've got no complaints. <laughs> no, I'm sure you haven't. That's because I'm paying all the rent, all the food bills, aren't I? I even have to lend you money to get into work to put petrol in my car. Well, you won't have to do that much longer. Get a company car. Barbara's going to pay the insurance, petrol, everything. She won't have to bother anymore, will you? Oh, yeah. You know what she did? When Clive first started, he didn't have enough money for a suit, did you? So I bought him one. Two weeks later, that cow throws it in the bin and buys him another one. Another better one. Don't shout at me. Can't you see what that old tart is up to? You don't have to slag her off. Yes, I do. Let's keep it down, shall we? Sorry. All you ever want to do is hold me back, don't you? You've got a million reasons not to do something, you have. And what you got, Clive? Well, at least I got a chance. You want to make it? You've got a mix with the people who are spy. When you look what Barbara's done in her life. She's old enough. She's mature. Why do you feel you have to cover for her? Because he fancies her. I told you, it's business. You do, don't you? What is this? Have you been to bed with her? Clive, have you? I won't be needing this anymore then, will I? Esther, wait, wait hang on. Oh, brilliant. You wouldn't have a word with yourself. Ask yourself a few questions, like where you're going to stay tonight. What? Barbara doesn't care about you, does she? Open your eyes, Clive. She's taking you for a ride. She even gave Bickham your address. Sorry. I didn't mean to do all that. Don't worry. I understand. I don't know what came over me. Well, I think you show great restraint in the circumstances. I can't just walk off like that, can I? Well, if you want my advice, you'll get Clive to come clean and make a statement about Barbara Hurst. That's all you care about, isn't it? Getting her. Don't you? Liz. Excuse me. I could give him one last chance, couldn't I? Yeah, you could. How's it going? It's getting emotional. Is he going to make a statement? Yeah, I think he will eventually. Eventually. Look, I am losing my patience with him, Liz. It's not easy facing up to the fact of being a fool. Especially when you're young and in love. In love? Look, that's all we need. Look, maybe we should nick him right now if he's going to play the fool, all right? Then we don't get anything on Barbara. Somebody has got to put him straight and quick. Otherwise, Barbara is going to do a runner. If she hasn't already. Right. Okay, Clive. We're running out of time. I want the truth now, or I'm going to do you with anything I've got, okay? Clive's got something to say, haven't you, Clive? All right. I'm waiting. Please, Clive. All right. I'm not a real partner. I thought I was, but I wasn't. I thought a lot of things. So Barbara ran the whole show? Yeah, she did. Everything. It was amazing. So what went wrong? I, well, I worked hard. I'm good at my job. All this money was coming in, and still nothing was happening with the launch. I kept thinking, this isn't right. This isn't in the plan. Didn't you ever confront her? Of course I did. She said I was losing my faith getting cold feet. So, she took me uptown. She'd got an option on this suite of offices in Chelsea Arbor. Stunning. She asked me how I'd feel about taking over the old of the South East while she went up north. I thought we'd be moving in next week. But she didn't. She said her lawyer found a problem with the lease. And while all this was going on, you were still selling? Yeah. And still telling your customers that the campaign was booked? What? I thought it had, so that's what I told everyone. We were getting quite a few complaints, and then, last week, when it happened again, I told her I'd had enough. And that's when it happened. What? 
we had a meal round at her place. Wine, liqueurs, the lot. And then, I don't know, it, it just happened. I'm sorry. She was a great cook. I bet she was. You said you had something to tell us. Come on, Clive. Let's get it over with, please. OK. She told me once, might be nothing, but she said she had a bit of trouble up north a while back. Go on. And her name wasn't Erst then either. It was, I think it was Hunt or Hunt or something like that. Right. All that work. All my plans, my whole future. I lost it all, haven't I? No, you haven't. I've got blood on my whistle, too. I thought about that. Esther! It's all right, you won't be needing them anymore, will ya? Right, thanks, Sarge. Barbara Hunt's wanted for questioning by the Yorkshire police. And guess what? Surprise me. It seems she was involved in a more or less identical scam in Scarborough. One call a hand to man, she left her husband to pick up the pieces from that one. You women can be a dangerous breed, can't you? It's always you blokes who fall for it. Not all of us. I mean, she never got me going once, did she? Sarge. Barbara Hunt. Oh. Going to the airport? Wait, just a moment. Is this going to take long? Yes, I'm afraid it is. I'm arresting you for deception. Oh, I see. Um, you can call your lawyer from the station. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Thank you. Are you going to put the handcuffs on? Do I need to? Mm. If we only did what we needed to, life would be very boring, wouldn't it? You're probably right. Come on. Would you mind? I need another pair of arms, don't I? Oh, of course. What about me? Will you tell him? Or shall I? You forgot a suitcase. Never got you gone once, did you, Sarge? You got her then? Yeah, but we're going to need a full statement from Clive in the morning. Not too full, I hope. You made your decision? I think so. He may be a prat, but I like him. You don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> yeah, but he's got no idea what I've got in store for him when I get him home. Have ya? <laughs> Come on, Clive. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> 